Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. And I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we're taking a look, more like I'm taking a look, and while he watches, at the death battle of Dio versus Alucard, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure versus Helsing. So, basically, in layman's terms, this is vampire versus anime interpretation of a vampire. Okay. Or anime interpretation of vampire versus another anime interpretation of a vampire. So you of course, okay. So you of course you know JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The very least, for that show, right? I, I I've heard of the show. That's it. Okay, that's so where it goes. Dio is that iconic meme where it's like you were, it, you know, you thought it was this, but it was I, Dio. You know that this is where this is where the meme comes from. Is from Dio, Never which seen is the meme. It's fine. That's why I'm explaining. Uh, basically, he's the antagonist. He's the main antagonist of part one of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, from what you know. And on the other side of things is Alucard, mm. this all-powerful vampire who helps a secret organization stop other creatures of the night, basically. More or less. He's kind of like chaotic neutral. Yeah. That's the best way to put it, kind of. Sort of. I've seen bits and pieces of JoJo's. I've seen a couple episodes of Helsing and the Helsing Abridged series that Team Four Star does. So I do know a couple things. Mm -hmm. But it will be interesting to see how they do this overall. So... Yeah, so let's dive into this uh, for, alright, this death battle for Dio versus Alucard, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure versus Helsing. So, here we go. Conquer the world and 
feed a baby to its own mother. <laughs> Just for kicks. We've had a lot of real pains and shit on this show, Will. But I'm starting to think Dio takes the cake. Luckily, his plans were foiled again by his old frenemy Jojo, who beat Dio's ass with a martial art that uses the power of the sun, Hamon. Because, should Dio's vampire body be subjected to sunlight, he will instantly disintegrate. So, what did Dio do? Well, he cut off his own head, killed Jonathan on his wedding night, and attached his head to Jojo's body. Well, cake taken, for sure. After a brief century yeah. in the coffin at the bottom of the ocean, Dio resurfaced to Egypt and tried once again to take over the world. His ultimate goal was to create a world where everyone knew their own fate and could make peace with the inevitable tragedies life had in store. In Dio's mind, heaven. And he'd make it happen no matter how many breads he'd have to eat. After being struck by a mystical arrow, sure, why not, Dio gained sure, a man. stand, the embodiment of a user's life force. Since they're made of psychic energy, stands can only be seen by standing users, and can only be heard by other stands. Quite the obstacle for any opponent lacking similar abilities. Oh, Ow! Hey! <laughs> I call it 99 Bottles! Hold on! Oh, shit! Uh, don't worry, Wiz! I'll take you back with your D-Transmo... Transmoga... Trans... Oh, look! A giant beer! Is he drinking Wiz? Uh, the fuck? As befits a god among men, okay, he's still alive again. One of the most powerful stands in yeah. history. The uh, world want to know. Which is the world to stop time. Time, huh? Thanks for the... Ow! Well, not only does his time stop get longer with each use, he can spam it as much as he likes. He's a massive troll. The world is absurdly strong and fast able to match the stand Star Platinum, which belongs to Jonathan's great-great-grandson, Jotaro Kuto. He technically inherited it from Dio through Jonathan's body and bloodline, making Star Platinum and the world the same stand. And both are two of the strongest stands out there, just as strong as Stone 3, which can punch meteors that were pulled to Earth in seconds. By measuring the distance the meteors are from Earth, we can estimate they were moving at over 11 million meters per second. Factoring in their mass, they each have a kinetic energy of 441 kilotons of TNT. I damn. That's that crazy when you can throw punches that are faster than light. No, really, Star Platinum kept up with this stand, Silver Chariot, which could cut a beam of light. Looking at the interval Silver Chariot sword swung relative to the light beam, it must have moved over 1,500 times the speed of light. And Dio himself has matched Star Platinum on his own and taken his punches head on. Yeah, yeah, but that's nothing compared to Dio's secret weapon, the greatest weapon in anime history! Yeah, wait for it. Him dropping a freaking Steamroller. A steamroller. Turns out Dio's a hell of a chef. He can make pancakes and donuts. Even so, despite Yay. having his massive god complex, Dio's still a careful technician capable of exploiting an opponent's weaknesses. Too bad he wasn't prepared for Jotaro to learn how to stop time too and murder the shit out of him. That's some hardcore karma right there. God but damn. it only makes sense that a god murderer would die like a God this damn. Bitch. But much like the machinations of great and terrible men, Dio's will was immortal. In time, his greatest follower succeeded in extinguishing the Jostar bloodline and literally remaking the universe in Dio's image, creating that heaven he always dreamed of. I guess when you're named after a rock star, a movie star, and, uh, oh, that's right, God, you're pretty much bound for greatness. You thought your first kiss would be Josie, but it was I, Dio. There you go, now you know. How blessed are some people whose lives have no fear, no dread. For though the world seems full of good men, there are monsters in it. But don't worry, jolly old England has it covered with the Helsing Organization. Founded by famous vampire hunter Abraham Van Helsing and led by his descendant Integra, this secret government institution has saved the world time and again with their secret weapon. And what better weapon to hunt vampires than with one of their very own, the No Life King, the Bird of Hermes, Alucard. In most, its origin was shrouded in mystery. But under Helsing's employ, he was molded into an elite hunter, made even more vicious Not by I didn't know that, I of his fellow vampire kind. Uh, 
angry the more you friend. Is with two of the gnarliest handguns you'll ever pray to your infinite god to never see in person. Alucard's primary sidearm is the Catlin, a behemoth of a handgun able to kill most undead in one shot with holy bullets that can nullify a vampire's healing factor. The Jackal is the handgun she tells you not to worry about. 16 inches long and weighs 35 pounds. It's armor piercing, hollow point bullets, jacketed in blessed Macedonian silver were built to annihilate the toughest monsters. And after decades of clandestine experimentation, Helsing enhanced Alucard's vampiric abilities far beyond the norm. Alucard can walk through walls, cast illusions, levitate, and move objects with his mind. Objects like, say, an ocean of over 3 million people's blood? Yeah. Or just a bit Or just a bit to read minds, communicate telepathically, hypnotize with a glance, and see through hallucinations with his third eye. He's not a triclub. It's more of a sixth sense that lets him hit bullseyes from a kilometer away and even predict your movements. Kind of like the Sharon gun. Of course, he wouldn't yeah. be a real vampire if he couldn't drink blood. The catch is, when he drinks enough blood to kill you, he literally absorbs your soul. That right there is the source of his most fearsome ability. You just can't kill the son bitch. Shoot him into Swiss cheese, blow his ass to smithereens, turn him into a literal blood puddle. He'll just regenerate his body lickety split. Like we've seen some overpowered healing factors on this show before, but Alucard is just bullshit. Yes, it While is. While he does possess blood and organs like a regular human, Alucard's body is, in reality, composed of an ethereal, shadow-like substance that he can morph any way he wants. This allows him to shapeshift and instantly heal any wound. And each soul Alucard has consumed acts as an extra life that he can spend whenever he's fatally injured. Kind of like a video game. And after 500 years of unlife, Alucard has consumed literally millions of souls. What up? Yay, more beer. Just like me. What up? Kelsey he's gonna turn into beer. To take on Millennium, aka Nazi vampires. That's like evil squares. Like when Millennium SS Lieutenant Rip Van Winkle commandeered a British aircraft carrier as part of an invasion of London. Alucard didn't like that very much, so he jackknifed it with an SR-71 Blackbird at Mach 3. <laughs> a fully loaded Blackbird weighs 170,000 pounds, meaning it struck with the kinetic energy of 11 tons of TNT. That's as powerful as the really US Massachusetts Ordnance the mother of all bombs. And Al was in the middle of that. He strolled out like it was nothing. Just as impressive as intercepting Rip's magic bullets. Comparing the distance one bullet moves to the jet in the same time frame as the jet's own movement, each bullet would have to be moving at 1,500 times the speed of sound. And Alucard caught one with his freaking teeth. And after giving Rip's name a new meaning, he drove that aircraft carrier back to shore with his mind to fight two separate armies at the same time. We're a goddamn monster! It goes without saying that Alucard's immense power and bloodlust needed to be controlled. So six restriction levels were placed on him that he can release against dangerous opponents. Level six or two are for wrecking your ordinary ghouls. Level one is for your heavy-duty vampires and for getting this gnarly demon doggo made from his shadow essence. Baskerville. But there exists That's a great greater state of power Alucard can release when he wants to end the world. Level zero. Once activated, Level Zero releases every single soul Alucard has consumed as a sea of blood-soaked zombies. All three million of them. Sure, with his soul gone, he can't heal as easily, and if his heart is destroyed, he'll die permanently. But the sheer numbers and power of this army from hell makes him virtually impossible to approach in the first place. He's unstoppable! This guy's got to be like the king of all vampires! Indeed, he is. Helsing purposely kept Alucard's true identity a secret, all in the code name. Alucard backwards in Dracula? Yeah, duh, man, idiot. Over 500 years ago, the Wallachian Wallode Vlad Dracula battled the Ottoman yeah, Turks the for control over Eastern Europe and impaled thousands of people in the process. And his historical name, Vlad the Impaler. But things didn't end up too good for him. Right before his execution, he took a big old sip of some blood from the battlefield, sacrificing his humanity in order to become an immortal creature of the night. And that is when the legend was born. But it wasn't anything Dracula was proud of. He grew to despise his monstrous nature and saw it as cowardice. The main reason he hated other vampires so much is that he really hated himself.
himself. Oh, that's deep, Will. Maybe that's why he always lets his enemies rip into him like a pinata of self-loathing. His crazy OP healing factor will fix everything anyways. Millennium would exploit this arrogance by tricking Alucard into absorbing the soul and abilities of Schrodinger, a German cat boy who controls his own quantum state. This grants him pseudo omnipresence and immortality. He can exist everywhere and nowhere, and cannot die so long as he can recognize his own existence. But because Al had three million souls kicking around inside him, Trudy couldn't recognize himself anymore, forcing him and the Alucard to fade out of existence. So Alucard spent 30 years killing the other three million souls inside of him until he could return to reality. God damn. Master. He undid his own unexistence. No matter how spoofy the threat. Wow, Alucard that's the biggest Uno reverse card I've ever seen. waiting for the day he meets a noble oh, yeah. human warrior strong enough to end his own life for good. But should he face a fellow monster, a fool who rejected their humanity like himself, he'll let loose the dogs of war, and all hell will sing. I'm a dog. Give you a dog food. <laughs> Who do you think is going to play? Well, one's an undead asshole, and one's an undead asshole does it for good reason. I'm going with Alucard. I mean, sure. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. I don't know. I don't know. Private Dio. That's why Blue Chew delivers the same active ingredients. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell by the JoJo names, but um, the creator of the show only thinds characters after I connect rosters. No, I know that. You do? Oh, you actually do. That's that. That's cool. We found one thing you knew. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you're like, you do a deal. Oh, that's not bad. You look at Alucard. Plus, it's all done online. No more awkward conversations with your doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATTLE at checkout to pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code BATTLE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thanks, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Here we go. I told you this would be spicy. <sighs> Can you interrupt me just like this? Do you? I love it. Is that? Do you? Me outside going, Finally, I got the white queen. <laughs> Real fucking vampire. I love that.
No Sienna Renee. Or that. Show Banger on. God damn, we got lying. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll start with the mortal. He may have been the king of the vampires in Hellspring, but Theo had everything he needed to clip the bird upon his wing. Amateur strategy in most fights is to heal from an opponent's attacks until they get tired, then take advantage of an opening. But he couldn't do that here because Theo didn't really have any openings, and Alucard wasn't nearly as strong or as fast to compensate. Alucard could survive crashing that gem and move 1,500 times faster than sound. But scaling from stone three and silver chariots, the world could punch relativistic meteors and move 1,500 times faster than light. Uh, speed that would make Theo nearly 40,000 times stronger and 800,000 times faster than Alucard. Hell, Alucard couldn't even see or hurt the world in the first place because he's not a sand user. And since stone mask vampires from JoJo aren't weak to holy weapons like Helsing vampires are, Al's cons were more or less dead weight. Plus, Alucard just has no way to get past the time stop. Even if he did, somehow, Theo could just freeze him on contact. And considering Theo has taken yeah. punches from Star Platinum, I Al guess it was just Alucard's going to be just really cool. Theo's yeah. far greater speed and power meant that Given enough time, he could realistically kill Alucard three billion times in quick succession. Without any viable options for attack or openings to exploit, Alucard's soul based regeneration would run out of lives eventually, and level zero only sped up that process. Sure, that there are nothing to scoff at, but consider the time Dio's eye beam split those huge ass clouds. Estimating the size of the clouds and the speed at which they moved, Theo's beams must have output an energy of over 10 megatons of TNT, enough to wipe out Alucard's army in one go, leaving him vulnerable. Just like when this other vampire, Walter, could have killed him by piercing his heart. Alucard even admitted it himself. Hell, Alucard's army is filled with blood. You know, that thing that Dio uses to heal? Well, Wiz, what about Schrodinger? With his powers, Al can't die unless he chooses to. While Schrodinger's quantum immortality makes him impossible to kill normally, it is literally part of the story that Alucard cannot have Schrodinger's abilities and his greater array of powers at the same time, or else he'll no longer exist. We can't give him both Schrodinger and his standard powers without breaking the lore and rules of the character. Even if we did, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't help him kill Dio at all, so at best it'd be a stalemate. Until Dio hypnotizes Alucard, asks him about his powers, and forces him to eject Shroni like the rest of his soul. Shocking though it may be, Dio's overwhelming offense, impenetrable defense, yeah, okay. and unique okay. devastating okay. ability. Hey, uh, we Alucard don't know enough to go, oh, that was and bullshit. No lives yeah. left. Alucard got Dio! Uh, Broomstick, you tell the worst puns in the world. That's right, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. And hey, wait a minute, that was a pun. That's my territory. We talk about that. The winner is Theo. Thank you. 
Thank you guys so much for watching the show. We really hope you enjoyed that episode of Death Battle. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, just click the box on the screen and check out Red vs. Blue Family Shattered, where the Red vs. Blue Zero crew gets up to all sorts of wacky antics. It's really fun. A lot of people who worked on Death Battle also worked on this show, so give it a watch. Thanks. Ooh, cool. Actually, oh, yeah, that, one. yeah, that one's gonna be good. And turn around the part two. Yeah, yeah. So that one, um, that, that one they'll probably, you guys will probably get the following week after we have this. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Fact finding lessons with, in anime. Yeah. So yeah, um Yeah, I I have nothing against DOA. I mean Alcard's pretty cool. Again, like we were saying before, we're not too deep into both our worlds. He knows enough pretty much just to get by. I don't know anything at all. Um, about yeah. these worlds, uh, at least the, their worlds specifically, but we know he knows he knew enough to at least get by, and that's about it, really. I mean, it's, uh, that's why there was no complaints, no like, no, he should have won, or no, 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 that's that's what we thought. But I mean, if you guys, of course, have any thoughts, just definitely comment down below. Yeah, definitely. So, other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button if you want to talk to us more about stuff like this. Comment down below if you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about death battles, hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys, again, thought of this death battle. Um, do you agree or disagree on who should have won or who should have lost or anything like that? And if you did, what was your explanation? You know, what, what, what do you guys think they should have done differently or there was something they didn't really tap into or brought up? That was not part of, uh, you know, certain characters or anything like that. Let us know in the comments down below. Put down what you thought of our reaction overall to this death battle. But most importantly, we thank you for watching. So until next time, I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. And this has been another very anime-filled episode of SRB. See ya. Later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and Stardust at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.